What's up, Klats? I am here in the capital of Slovakia in Bratislava. And today I'm going to be giving you guys an everything you need to know guide all about the city. I want to remind you guys to subscribe and turn those notifications so you don't miss a single video. And let's jump into everything you need to know about Bratislava by rolling the intro. All right, my friends, welcome. This is Bratislava. This is it. I'm at the top of one of the highest points in the city right now called the Slavin. This is like a monument to something that happened back in the day that I'm not allowed to mention because YouTube will demonetize this video, but you can Google it if you want some information on it. This city is awesome. It's very small. There's things to do on every corner, and the beautiful thing about it is it's so accessible. You can walk anywhere pretty much. Pretty much all the big sites are directly behind me right now, like the Bratislava Castle, the UFO Tower, and the St. Michael's Cathedral. They're, they're all like literally directly behind me right now, and they're no more than a 10 minute walk away. When I do these everything you need to know guides I break them down by sub subjects I also tend to go very fast so if you need to rewatch something just scroll back in the video and make sure you watch it this is just so I can relay a lot of information to you guys very quickly in this everything you need to know guide I also want to plug this right now before this video starts if you guys are coming to Bratislava and you want a cheap place to stay Bratislava is a cheap city Airbnb is even cheaper here I have a link in the description for $40 off your first Airbnb no matter where in the world you use it that could be up to like five nights here in Bratislava I was paying almost $10 for an Airbnb here. So you'll get some credit and you'll also be supporting this channel by doing that. But before we do anything else, let's jump into our first sub-subject, which will be the locations. All right, so this goes without saying, Bratislava has a dope old town. That is what this thing is called, not the old city, but the old town. Like I mentioned earlier, very small and walkable. The old town is probably your main tourist hotspot. It's where everything basically exists. It's the melting pot of where all the tourists are, the large squares, the old churches. And I'm gonna list off to you guys some of the sites that you have to visit when you're in the old town. It took me a morning, maybe an hour and a half to two hours to walk all of the major sites in Bratislava. Seriously, I'm not even joking. The city is very, very, very small. Let's start with Michael's Gate. Michael's Gate is going to be your entranceway into the old town, depending on where you come from, obviously. Passing through this gate will basically bring you through the archways of the old town. The old town will open up in front of you after you pass under those gates. It's not necessarily a special building. There's a little spire type of church looking type of building coming at the top of it, but it's more of the significance of passing under there that enters you into the old town. Right after Michael's Gate, you can walk yourself over to the Church of Annunciation, which is the oldest church in Bratislava. It's pretty rugged on the outside. It looks like it's been through some stuff. Go on the inside, it's still actively a church. People are still using it, so just keep your respect. Coming in with a camera, try to be a little more discreet if you're gonna film and take pictures, because people are praying there. It's a very beautiful interior, and it just looks like one of those, you know, casual churches around the world. Also, within the Old Town, we have the Main Square and Old Town Hall. Old Town Hall is gorgeous. It's right at the entranceway of the Main Square, so you can kind of pop in there before you go into or see the rest of the Main Square. It's awesome. The Old Town Hall is is really cool it's got a cool interior and even a giant chess board that they bring out these giant chess pieces that you could play with looking around there's different architecture there's these like gargoyles and snake like things on the top of it and it's really really cool there's tons of really cool buildings if you pass under through to the other side there's this beautiful pink building which i'm not even sure what it is but the old town hall is really really cool it's worth checking out it's got this little square in the middle with, with natural sunlight that comes in and i'm pretty sure there's a museum you can visit on the inside of it as well coming out of that old town hall you'll hit up the main square this is the biggest square in bratislava it's pretty big it's it's not massive, massive, but it's pretty large. It's nice, there's tons of shops, restaurants, there's even a beautiful fountain in the middle of it. If you're taking some sort of walking tour here, this could be a big site that the walking tour will take you to or even start in. I saw plenty of walking tours and tourists. This is pretty much the tourist hotspot. This is kind of your main meeting point in Bratislava. It's also interesting because most of the streets that branch off of the main square become your tourist hotspots as well with a lot of restaurants, bars, places to sit down, chill, whatever it is kind of branches off that main square. So keep in mind the main square is kind of your hub if you want to begin your adventures you can start there and then branch off to the different streets with all these little tourist sites to see and do pretty close to that main square if you walk down a street a little bit with tons of restaurants like i mentioned earlier you'll see two important things one is called the men at work statue or the man at work statue this is like a little statue of a man coming out of the ground but you can find a bunch of them all over the city it's actually like a pretty popular thing to go and see here so historical building of the slovak theater this building is beautiful. There's like this flower garden in the front, some water fountains, and it opens up to this other plaza that takes you around. It's really, really, really pretty. I highly, highly suggest visiting this one. All right, next up, having a hard time pronouncing this one, but I think this is pronounced the 
Kostol Svatej Alzbeti. I don't speak Slovak, so sorry for that. This is like your fairy tale church. It's freaking crazy. I've been around the world, seen a lot of churches, never seen a church like this. Blue icing church with like little white, I don't even know how to explain it. It is freaking awesome. Definitely check this building out. I've never seen a building like this before in my travels. On the inside, unfortunately it was closed, so I could only take a peek through the, the glass, but I heard that you can go in when it's in use. So just keep that in mind if you want to check it out from the inside. Definitely a cool site and probably one of the more unique buildings here in Bratislava. So the city is a sort of mix of the old town and then some of the more modernized bits like the universities and the tech centers and the new parks that are coming about and some other like palaces and stuff that are a part of the city. So we're going to cover some of those major sites now. So of course, smack dab in the middle of the center, pretty modernized, is the Presidential Palace. This is a beautiful palace. It's sort of Bratislava's White House. It's a very, very pretty building and you even have those armed guards standing on the outside so definitely worth checking out the gates are like covered in this gold statues and stuff. it's just it's amazing very very beautiful place right behind the presidential palace is the presidential garden which is a beautiful botanical garden lots of flowers lots of plant life lots of places to chill little places to take kids if you're coming to kids there's lots of cool stuff to do there there are people with hammocks laying out on the ground it's it's a very very nice relaxing place and you have a view of the palace behind you but right now the palace is in under construction so I didn't really get a beautiful view but you do have that view if it eventually stops being under construction all right moving on from there we have two other really cool locations one is the summer archbishop's house you can really only see this from the outside but it's a sort of other like palace like structure it's beautiful gorgeous architecture from the outside and right across from the street from there is this thing called union it's just this big circular thing with lots of little paths leading around definitely worth checking out if you want to just chill out if you're taking somebody on a date or something maybe go to union park if you guys want to get a little romantic i saw a lot of people making out over there and for the little bit of jewish history that still exists in slovakia a lot of history with jews in slovakia a lot of really bad stuff happened to the jewish people here but there's actually one synagogue left from what i was able to understand at least in the old town area it's called the heyudakova street synagogue a very interesting looking synagogue i've never seen a synagogue like this in my life worth checking out i know it's really open for like two days a week to walk around and tour and i think there's a jewish museum inside of it all right now we got the big mamma jammas these are your top top sites that you don't want to miss the locations that you're definitely going to want to visit when you're here in Bratislava. Number one, the Bratislava Castle. I'll be honest with you guys, I joked around about going up to the top of this castle before I got here because I was like, this castle looks a little lame. It's not that cool looking. There's a joke that if you flip the castle over, it turns into a chair or a table. It's not the most fascinating looking castle, let's be honest, but it's been inhabited for a very, very long time. There's a lot of history there and the views from the top of it for sunset specifically are second to none in the city. It's incredible. There are some better viewpoints in the city generally, but they're a little bit further outside of the city. In the city itself, it's free to go to the top of, unbeatable. It's just amazing. The viewpoints are incredible. As you can see by these drone shots, you can see everything. You can see the whole city from the top of it. And if you walk a little bit down a path, take some stairs around and come up to this little lawn, it's a little quieter with less people. Generally, there were some more people on this on the top of it, but really there were no more than like 20 people there the entire time. So if you really just want to get peaceful, make your way up to that little grass thing. I'm not going to give you direct details. You'll be able to find your way in addition to that pretty close to the castle just across the bridge is the ufo restaurant you're actually gonna be able to see this from the top of the castle the ufo restaurant is one of these staples and it's actually right there behind me right now it's one of these staples of bratislava it's, it sits at the top of a bridge you can take an elevator on the way up and you'll get circular views of the entire city because the restaurant spins i personally did not go to the top of it because it was a little more expensive and I actually had something else i'd rather do which is another restaurant that spins by chance but it's pretty cool it's probably one of the better viewpoints that you'll be able to get in the city but but remember it does cost money also they were a little iffy from what i saw on their website about people filming there so all right to contend with the ufo tower you have the Kamzik TV Tower, which is actually right over there right now, and I can actually see it from where I'm standing. I visited this place, it's awesome. It's the better option, in my opinion, than going to the UFO Tower. Why? Because there's zero entrance fee, and you can go to the top for as cheap as two euro 20 if you just get a coffee. There's a bar there and a restaurant called the Altitude Restaurant, but it's got these beautiful panoramic views of the entire city of Bratislava and the surrounding areas. You could actually even see Austria from up there. Beautiful viewpoint, highly recommend going up to the top of there, especially since it's so cheap and it's situated 
in this beautiful forest. So if you want to do some hiking and walking around this forest after, beautiful spot to do. As well, like I mentioned, it does have a spinning restaurant. Sit inside the restaurant and basically what happens is not the restaurant spins, but the floor in the restaurant spins, giving you an entire 360 panoramic view of the whole surrounding area. It makes it for a very interesting dining experience because while you're eating, you're going to see things that you haven't seen before and you'll keep looping around. All right, for a cool other view, you have the old bridge. That is the bridge parallel to the UFO bridge. Very, very cool. You can walk across that old bridge, get a beautiful view of the castle of the UFO bridge. Just awesome place to go see sunset to go in the middle of the night. That old bridge is awesome. Definitely recommend going over there. All right, we're almost at the end here of the sites, guys. Here you have the Slavin. This is kind of a little bit off of the city. It's in the city itself, but it's just a little bit in the corner at a high viewpoint because it's on the top of a sort of mountain-like hill. You'll have beautiful sights of the whole city here. It is a monument to recognize people that have are not here anymore. I can't say specific details, unfortunately, like I mentioned, YouTube will demonetize this video if I give you guys the history. So please just Google the history before you come. It's actually very interesting and important for why this place exists. The Slavin, it's really cool, really beautiful. And last but not least is actually a location that's not in Bratislava, but I'm mentioning it because they're frequently put in together, especially when you're traveling to Bratislava. This is a place called Devin. Devin is a little town right on the border of Austria and it has a beautiful castle called Devin Castle. Beautiful place for a day trip. It actually, you can get there even faster if you don't want to take public transport. You can take an Uber for like 10 euro, even cheaper than that. If you're going with some friends, you could split it. Entrance fee to the top costs you five euro, so it's really worth it in my opinion. I also managed to pet a sheep for my first time in my life when I was there, which is crazy because I've been chasing sheep around the world and I even got to touch a donkey. You hike up to the top of this old ruins of these castles and it's amazing. It is so cool looking. Very Game of Thrones esque. I've never seen such a dilapidated castle and because of how cheap it is and how fun it is to just walk around there It's probably one of the better values you have of things to do in the Bratislava area And it's once again like I mentioned if you do this early in the day It's shorter than a day trip you could do it very quickly You could probably do it in two hours and head right back to Bratislava and do more exploring within the town itself So I highly highly recommend checking out Devin You'll enjoy every moment you have there and the views there are unparalleled. They're absolutely beautiful I also want to recommend one last location and I'm not sure if this is a hot spot I wasn't really able to tell it's called Obkonda Street I think that's how it's pronounced I'm putting this out there because this is side of, sort of like the high street this is actually where my Airbnb is situated and I'll link to that Airbnb down below if you guys want to book it but it's located right on this sort of high street there are tons of restaurants bars all the bigger restaurants and bars are all right on this street or right off of this street so I highly recommend if you're coming to this place definitely take a stroll through that part of town it's really close to the old town it's right on the outsides of the old town so very very good location to be strategically if you want to experience some of the more local and tourist life within the city. All right, my friends, that's gonna cover all the locations that I need you guys to see when you come to Bratislava. There is an ant on my camera. Get off my camera. All right, now it is time to jump into the next sub-subject of this video, which is going to be accommodation. Guys, you know, I gotta plug my Airbnb link, first of all, because I know it's gonna save you guys money, and tons of you guys send me messages telling me that you're using my Airbnb link, and it saved you money, whether you were in New York, or in Israel, or in Japan, or in Hawaii, wherever you were, I'm getting tons of notifications that you guys use my Airbnb link, and I'm happy when you guys save money, so make sure that if you use my Airbnb link, you send me some DMs, show me how much money you guys saved. But yes, I think my top recommendation for accommodation will be an Airbnb. If you can save money, using my Airbnb link, it's there's no doubt about it, you should do that. And there's some really, really cheap Airbnbs in this city, especially if you book a little bit ahead of time. If you know you're coming here, maybe a month or two ahead, you'll be able to get a really, really sick deal. You can even get five to 10 nights for free using the Airbnb credit, depending on how cheap those Airbnbs actually are. Airbnbs are really, they're plentiful throughout the city. As well, you have hostels almost on every corner. There's hostels everywhere all across Bratislava and in addition to that there are hotels hotels obviously being a little more expensive hostels being a little cheaper Airbnbs being your best option so make sure you use my Airbnb link down below in the description if you want $40 off your first stay here in Bratislava and let's jump off to our next sub subject let's talk about food baby food in Slovakia is actually freaking awesome I've been learning a lot about Slovak food and Slovak cuisine and how it works and it's really interesting so I'm gonna give you guys a little basic break breakdown right now but you're really gonna have to do your own exploring when you're here when it comes to Slovakian food so Slovakian food generally from what I've understood is not a popular thing to go out and eat in Slovakia Slovakian people don't generally go out looking for Slovakian food they generally like to eat other things and they make their Slovakian food at home hence finding 
Slovakian food out at a restaurant is actually kind of difficult and when you do find it it's actually a little pricey. There are exceptions to the rule and there are some typical restaurants that are a lot cheaper. I'll just give you guys the dishes you should go out and look. Alright so your top 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 food is probably the staple of Bratislava is called Brinzove Halushki. Brinzove Halushki is basically these little potato dumplings or tiny little dumplings different than like pierogies or something like that and they're put in this sort of bed of sheep's cheese very strong pungent cheese it's really interesting if you're not a huge fan of like goat cheese and sheep cheese and stuff like that you're probably not going to love it but it is a staple I gotta mention it it's also usually put on with bacon on top I just don't eat pork so I didn't have mine with bacon on top all right your next one I don't really have the name of it's just dumplings with poppy seeds mixed nuts or other sweetened things they're these sort of long dumplings that have poppy seeds and sugar and sweet nuts kind of like sprinkled on top schnitzel is another big thing being in such close proximity to Austria and Germany and all these other countries that schnitzel is a huge food in schnitzel is something that you're gonna want to try when you hear it's usually served as pork once again I don't eat pork so I opted for chicken schnitzel still amazing and it's actually really really cheap all right in addition to that we have fried cheese and french fries this is just a famous thing it's pronounced vipranzi sir I don't know if I'm saying that right but it's delicious it's a late night pub food so definitely check that out another thing that I need to mention about finding Slovakian food a lot of times you're gonna find the classic Slovakian food in pubs pubs and going out to pubs and eating Slovakian food in pubs is sort of the biggest way to intake Slovakian food so keep that in mind. If you want to get Slovak food, you're probably going to have to head to a pub. As well, we have tons of different types of soups. One of the most famous is cabbage soup, and they usually put a little bit of meat in there, from what I've understood, usually pork. But the cabbage soup is a very, very popular dish here in Slovakia as well. And in addition to that, Slovakians like to be on a budget like all of us other humans. So kebabs and Chinese food and other Asian foods are very widespread throughout the city, especially on that street that I mentioned to you guys earlier. Highly recommend trying some kebabs when you're here. There are a lot of really awesome kebab shops. And if you're looking for some late night food that's pretty cheap and fulling, filling you're gonna want to head to a kebab place the most famous drink is called borovička it comes from a tree it is very arboreal to say the least the flavor is not my favorite in the world but it will get you drunk if that's what you're looking to do so keep in mind borovička is a big drink that you might want to drink when you're here in Slovakia so Slovakian cuisine that's pretty much your main gist of it there's obviously things that I missed and if you're Slovakian and I missed your favorite dish please comment down below let people know if they need to find something else that I missed out on but that's a nice little spread for you guys to try when you're here in Bratislava all right guys, and as the life of a YouTuber is, my camera actually crapped out on the outro of this video. So I wanna just continue to reiterate a few more points at this different location that I'm at right now. I just really wanted to say this very fast. Slovakia and Bratislava more specifically are very, very affordable, especially for European prices. They're on the Euro, so it's cool if you're traveling around this area to get back on the Euro because a lot of countries in Europe do work on the Euro. But prices are relatively affordable for most things, whether it's the attractions, the foods, the restaurants, water, whatever, basic accommodation. It's all really, really cheap. And of course, once again, just to quickly mention, if you do use my Airbnb link, you'll get those free accommodations. So you might as well do it so it'll be even cheaper. And that, my friends, is going to be the end of your everything you need to know guide to Bratislava, Slovakia. I hope that you guys enjoyed this one. I hope it was a good video for you. I hope you learned a little bit. Let me know if you end up going to Bratislava and using anything you learned on this guide. And of course, use that Airbnb link down below in the description. The Slovak word for the day is going to be pivo, which means beer. And if you want to help support this channel, use that Airbnb link. You can buy some merch on screen right now or in the description below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. See you next time, class. Love you a long time. Goodbye.